York is known for many things, being the capital for both Viking Empire and Roman provinces of Britannia Inferior, its Minster, the Round Trees Factory, and most famously of all, its castle walls. What isn't as well known is what happened on the night of April 29th, 1942, the night the war came to the walls. For the residents of York, the threat of war was very real. They had heard the news of other northern cities such as Sheffield and Hull being bombed in recent weeks, and over the last couple of days, both Bath and Norwich, two other cathedral cities, had been bombed by the Luftwaffe. But after nearly 800 air raid warnings sending the citizens of York to their shelters, with only a couple of bombs falling to the ground, the local population was growing complacent. Wednesday the 29th of April started like any other day. The people of York would have commuted to work, children would have been in school, the city would have gone about its daily routine, not knowing what was heading its way from mainland Europe. These were the so-called Baedeker raids. The story had it that Hitler, enraged by RAF's attacks on Lebec and Rostock, picked up a Baedeker guidebook and ordered every historic place in England marked with three stars be bombed in retaliation. At 2.36am the raid began. One account from that night claims that no sirens went off. Jean Murray was a nine-year-old that night that the bombs started to fall over York. She's not sure what woke her that night in her bedroom in Plantation Drive. As far as I know, the sirens never went off, she says. Probably it was the sound of bombs and themselves. There were lots of bangs, she continues. It was dark in her bedroom, all of the windows were blacked out. But as she went into the bathroom, she could see the red lights coming through the windows. Scared, she went in to wake her mum and dad. And then the whole family rushed downstairs. There was an Anderson shelter in the garden, but we couldn't get out of there for all the bombs, she recalls. So we all got under the table, mum, dad, my brother, me, the poor dog, all under the table. Unopposed for much of the York raid, the German air crew dive bombed ordinary streets, striping them with machine gun fire. In Clifton, Irene Ellsgood was 13 years old that night. She and her family lived in Kingsway North. They tried to make a dash for the air raid shelter in the garden when the bombings began. She believes the Luftwaffe were targeting Clifton Aerodrome, but were driven back by bullets. It was terrible, Irene recalls. We couldn't get out of the house because they were firing bullets. The planes were flying very low as they came over, and you could see the tracer. The assault had greater aims than just to terrorise the civilian population and lower the morale. David Thomas was five years old when the raids began over Nunthorpe Road that Wednesday night. He recalls, I was taken to an Anderson shelter in the back garden after the bombing had started. I could see sparks flying across the sky and could hear explosions in the city and some more distant. Late on in the raid, when things were less intense, my father decided to go back into the house for some reason. Just as he was about to leave the shelter, bombs fell on Nunthorpe Grove. I cannot be precise about the sound of the approaching bomb. Our mother apparently explained, we'll all go together but there was a tremendous shockwave which split the roof open and all the protecting soil fell through. The bomb had exploded in the garden just behind our shelter. Only a few streets away at the bar convent, a bomb had come through one corner of the building at Nunnery Lane. It didn't go off, but as the sister lay across the ticking device, she implored the others to keep away. 